Hi, this is a Curvy 3D4 tutorial, Gigantic, where I take you through the process from creating a base mesh to posing to a final sculpt. I use this model in an illustration. Um, so I'll be showing you how to pose this and make the accessories too. So this first step in making a base mesh, I usually bring in a sketch or a drawing to use as a, a plan. Um, it's ideal if you've got two sides, a front and a left view, and you can bring them into your views and pretty much trace over the top to get your model. I'm going to freeze these models uh, that I bought in so I don't accidentally click them when I'm trying to select the rest of my mesh. And Control G can group them, double click on the group name to rename it, and I've got my references tidied away there. Next we can start uh, drawing the model. So I can zoom in on the zoom in on my reference first and just make sure it's aligned in the centre of the scene, the slightly brighter grey line on the grid in the middle. This will be very helpful later on when I'm mirroring and using symmetry. And the next step, just to check my references, is to make sure they're the same height and alignment. So I'm pulling in my left reference, double checking it's the right height, um, and the feet and the head line up correctly. This won't always be possible, like if you're using photo reference of someone's head, um, but you want to get it as close as possible. And if you're, you're doing a head, lining up things like the eye and the ear, help you get the, the head's rotation right. Um, I'm going to put this into a split view so we can see the front and the left. Just arranging it nicely. Um, we don't need the grid anymore. We can see we've got our reference images. Now we can start um, drawing the shapes. So I'm going to zoom in, work from head to toe. So I've selected the lathe tool and I'm drawing a, a C shape to capture the forehead and chin, and then a backward C shape to capture the, the back of the head. And then in the front view, I'm drawing a a third curve to capture the side of the head. Um, I'm just going to use the soft move tool to tweak the, the shapes of the ends of these curves so they line up a bit more neatly. And then I'm using the, the smooth curve, um, the Bezier curves smooth tool to um, round out parts of the curve. You want to select a short length of curve with this tool because it'll only create a very simple curve. If you create, if you if you try and drag it over a long, complicated curve, it'll crush all the detail and just simplify it into a, a simple sweep. And now, using symmetry on my object, um, so lathe symmetry means that my side curve gets used for both sides of the model. And now we've got a pretty good shape on the head. Uh, I just turn down the, the strength of the soft move tool so it drags just a small part at the end of the curve. So that's the head. I'm going to move on to the neck. Neck's dead simple. Just draw the front and the back shapes again and the side making sure to overlap with the head and the um, the chest area so you don't get any gaps again using the simple smooth tool to round those shapes off and moving down to the chest area I've, uh, I've chosen to segment the torso into three parts for this model. The, 
the sort of top of the chest, the, the middle trunk and the pelvic region. Um, this lets me um, bend the model in a very simple way, so I can tilt the, the chest and the pelvis how I need them. If you know what pose you're going to end up with, you, you could do it with a single model. So drawing in the pelvis, again front, back, side and symmetry. Um, but the good thing is here, before we've had to do any sculpting, we've got the, the layout of these shapes just drawn in, um, in a very easy to edit way. Again, changing the, the strength of the soft move tool just to tweak in that curve a bit. Uh, we've got a hidden edge here. So I'm going to estimate the, the back of the, the midriff section. In this case, going to give him quite a narrow waist to emphasize his sort of bodybuilder size shape. Again with symmetry. And now we have a torso. This, uh, this finishes the, the center parts of our man base mesh. Now we're going to move on to the, the sides. Um, but first I want to tidy up my scene, um, double clicking on each object to give it a sensible name, which will help me organize things later. And then with the, the parts named, I'm going to drag them in the, the groups panel to make a hierarchy. So the head's connected to the neck, the neck's connected to the chest, and so on down to the, the pelvis. This means that when I rotate a part, all the parts lower down the hierarchy will move too, which makes it easier to pose later on. I've forgotten one part, so that's the... Uh, sort of bit of the top between the neck and the shoulder. Um, so I'm going to add that in now, just turning off the snap rotation so I can get it precisely into place. So yeah, it come, flows off the neck and into the top of the, the shoulder. Just give that a name and drag it into place in the hierarchy. Okay, now we can move on to the arm. Um, just drawing what I can see to start off with, tracing around the contours of the shapes. And then moving and rotating the object uh, into place. So when you draw it, it'll just appear on the starting grid. So sometimes you'll need to move things forward or backward to fit the, the, the rest of the drawing. Now in the top view, I'm going to draw on some more curves for the sides. So this shape is made of four curves. So we have left, right, top, bottom curves in this case which gives us a lot of control over the shape. So now in the, the left view, I'm dragging out a rough shape and then I'm going to use the circle ruler to turn that rough shape into a, into a circular arc. And then tweaking it into place. I think it needs a bit more sort of uh, depth to it, otherwise it looks like a flat plate sitting on the top of the shoulder. So I'm just dragging the curves down inside the arm, um, just like we overlapped the neck with the chest. I'm, I'm going to overlap this muscle with the muscles lower down in the arm to give us a sort of smoother transition. Yeah. 
And then moving down the arm, I'm going to do the entire top section of the arm as, as another lathe. You could model each muscle individually. Uh, sometimes I model a separate bicep muscle um, on the front. Um, but I'm planning to do quite a lot of sculpting on this later. So I don't need too much detail in the base mesh stage. In fact, this arm is going to be considerably foreshortened in the final image. Uh, so again, it sort of crushes down how much detail you need in it. And similarly, the, the lower arm, I know I'm going to be, it's going to be covered over with a piece of armor. So although I, I'll try and get the proportions correct, I won't worry too much about the detailing of that arm. So this this is the first um, lathe, which is a, a bit different in that the, the whole object is sort of curved on itself. So I'm dragging the, the original center lines to make them also curved. So they're curved around the back and the front of the arm, but I also want them to bend along with the arms, bend from the front view. Um, you want your curves to sit on the like the, the fattest, highest part of the the model, so it gets the, the best sort of rounded appearance. I'm going to do the hands later, so I'm just putting in a placeholder for the moment. Um, quite often, I will reuse hands from other models, so I can just throw in a placeholder, and then later on. Just load up a hand I already made. Um, I'll be sculpting the hands later, just to show you that process. But normally I just load them in. Um, and sometimes if the character is not very important in the scene, I'll just reuse a head from an old character as well. Um, but I quite enjoy sculpting heads, so I don't reuse them too often. So now moving on to the leg, uh, we want this to be rotated slightly diagonally so it looks like it's following the line of where the leg bone would be. Um, again, we're tracing around the shape, but notably we're having quite a considerable overlap over the pelvis and quite a considerable overlap where the knee is. Um, this helps get you a smooth surface when you merge the parts later. Um, the more overlapping, the, the smoother the result will be. You can always go in with a smooth tool and tidy these things up, but uh, the less sculpting you have to do, the better, really. If the original shapes are good, then a lot of that can show through to the final model. So for the, the lower leg, I'm going to do that considerable overlap again. Um, they're almost creating a, a ball of overlapped model where the joint lies. This is also helpful when you're posing because you can use that sort of overlapping section and imagine that's the, the ball of the joint that you're having to rotate. Like the wrist, um, this is a curved bone, so I'm going to drag the, the front and the back lines to match the curve of, of that calf and lower leg. Again, this will set the sort of the highest point on the leg as it rotates around. And then just, just sketching in the sides. Um, the legs are pretty insignificant when it comes to this model later on because they're off camera, but I reuse the this base mesh to make another character in the scene and you can see slightly more of his legs. Um, and in fact, I reuse the base mesh for a, a female character um, with considerable editing and you can see her legs. So. 
it's it's useful to to model the whole thing now. Um, notably, the the character who you can see the legs of is a long way in the distance, so I'm not bothering too much about detailing the foot. Um, I can tweak that if I need to later, but for the moment, it's not that important. So once I've renamed these parts to keep track of them, I'm going to join them up with a hierarchy, drag them into place on top of each other. Uh, so we have a articulating arm and leg ready to pose later. So even though it, it looks fairly simple, um, this has sort of solidified my pose, my not my pose, my proportions, um, and the sort of the volumes and the bulk and the feel of my the character um, from an early stage. And those things don't have to change. If I'm happy with them, they don't have to change later on while I'm sculpting. I can just focus on the details later on. But getting a well-proportioned uh, figure is is a massive, massive step forward to then any of the art you're going to create off that later on. So that's part one. We've created the initial base mesh of the man. Um, part two will be turning him into a giant.